boys and girls, welcome to my show, Middle of the Folk. I'm your host, Ms. Doe. Today, we are here to tell the story of a missing little boy named William Tyrell. The case happened in 2014 and unfortunately, it is still unsolved. Come on, let's begin. Before we start, I have to say some things. Unfortunately, something is wrong with my phone, so sometimes the voice sounds weird. I'm really sorry about that. And uh, the other thing I want to say is that I wasn't able to get ready for this case. So, like, I just wrote an article about William but I didn't have chance to take a serious look at it so I don't think I will be able to tell it from my mind so we have two options here either I will read it or I will just use photos and I will just record my voice well, I don't know what to do right now. I decided to do both. Well, actually, I was really, really busy in the last few weeks. Like, I was at the hospital, and then I had to go to school, and then I had exams. So, like, that's why I wasn't able to get ready. I'm so sorry again. Let's start! Well... On the 11th of September 2014, three-year-old William Tyrell, his foster parents and his five-year-old sister traveled four hours from Sydney to visit his foster mother's mother in Kendall. So as you can see, the case takes place in Australia. His foster grandmother's house on Benaroon Drive is directly across the Bushland Road from the Kendall State Forest about 35 kilometers or 22 miles south of Port Macquarie between 10 and bleh, oh my god well I feel like you guys are get used to me already so I won't say sorry for my mistakes we can see the importance of a little dot here well, okay, between 10 and 10.25 a.m. on the 12th of September, Tyrell and his sister were playing hide-and-seek in the front and backyard while his foster mother and foster grandmother were sitting outside watching them. His foster mother went inside to make a cup of tea. She became worried after she had not heard him for five minutes and began searching the yard and house. Shortly after Tyrell's foster father returned after going to Lakewood on business and began searching the street and door knocking neighbors. At 10.56, his foster mother phoned emergency services to report him missing and the police arrived at 11.06. 1106. His foster mother's last memory was that Tyrell was imitating a tiger's roar rawr, while running towards the side of the home and then there was silence and he had disappeared. Now, let's take a look at the initial search efforts. Hundreds of police, members of state emergency services, Rural fire survives and members of the community search day and night for Tyrell. Specialist police, including the sex crime squad from Strike Force, were immediately formed. Motorcycles and helicopters were brought into search. 200 volunteers searched overnight. Hundreds of people combed right terrain around the home and police divers searched waterways and dams. The police searched every house in the state that surrounds Benaroon Drive several times. 
The police detection dogs were brought in and they managed to detect Tyrell's scent, but only within the boundaries of the backyard. Strike Force Rosin was established with specially trained investigators from the State Crime Command who are experienced in the unexplained disappearance of young children. They supported the police, other emergency services workers, and members of the public involved in the search. After five days, police said they were unable to come up with any leads. The police later began investigations into finding the tri drivers of two cars that were seen parked on the dead end road on the morning Tyrell disappeared. The cars, described as a white station wagon and an older style grey sedan, sedan or I don't know, were parked between two driveways of the acre lot of land. They were seen with their driver's side windows down and were unknown in the neighborhood where locals or friends. These cars were noticed by Tyrell's mother and they have not been seen again since the time he disappeared. The police regard these particular vehicles with suspicion as there seemed to be no logical reason why they would be parked on the street before William's disappearance. Yes, those cars are suspicious. Reportedly, at 9 a.m., a green or gray sedan, sedan car drove past the Tyrell home while Tyrell and his sister were riding bikes in the driveway. The car drove into the no through road, did a U-turn in the neighbor's driveway, and drove out of the street. Secondly, another Ford WD was sighted driving out of Benaroon Drive at about 10.30 a.m., about the time he disappeared. The same vehicle was later seen speeding down another Candle Street. The police said that they have known about these cars since the investigation started. However, as part of investigative strategy, information about these vehicles was not released to the public until 12 months after Tyrell disappeared. 12 months means one year. The police cleared Tyrell's family of any involvement in the disappearance and earlier believed the boy was abducted by an opportunistic stranger who may have a connection with a pedophile ring. Poof. The police also believed that the boy could be alive in the hands of a group of people suspected of pedophile activity, but it is no longer believed the kidnapper is a member of a pedophile ring. Um, pedophile. The police have interviewed dozens of people, including a number of pedophiles. A current affair reported that about 20, 12 registered sex offenders were living in the surrounding area of Kendall where Tyrell went missing. Two persons of interest in the case, both convicted child sex offenders, may have met up on the day Tyrell vanished. The family of one pedophile, who had 90 convictions against his name, including aggravated in the canned assault of a minor, said he was going to visit another child sex offender on that day and returned home drunk that afternoon. But he told police he spent that day in the bush collecting scrap metal. I'm so sorry about my pronunciation. I don't know what's happening. Today I feel weird. I'm sorry. It was reported that both men lived in the Kendall area and had been driving vehicles that matched the description of the gray sedan and white station wagon that had been seen near the Tyrell house around the time he disappeared. They also had been members of an organization called G-A-P-A, -A, grandparents as parents again, and were friends. The pair has both been questioned by the police and they categorically denied being friends or having any involvement in the disappearance. Another man who repaired a washing machine at Tyrell's foster home is facing unrelated historical child sex charges in Victoria. 
and was due to appear in court on the 4th of July 2016. The police had charged the man with multiple child sexual offenses, including various counts of indecent indecent assaults and sexual intercourse with children between 1983 and 1985 in Victoria. The man posted an online video in September 2015 denying any involvement in the Tyrell disappearance and that he had been to the Tyrell home on the 9th and 18th of September but not to that street on the 12th of, of September the day Tyrell disappeared. More than a thousand suspected sightings were reported to the investigation team in the two years after Tyrell disappeared. It includes a photo taken of a man and a young boy from Queensland who looked strikingly similar to Tyrell. However, 24 hours later, the police received another call to confirm that the boy was not him. In early 2015, two passengers and a member of the New Zealand's bound flight crew thought they saw Tyrell on their airplane. The police met the aircraft at the airport and soon discovered it was not him. Another photo came across to the police showing a young boy and a woman in a McDonald's restaurant in central Queensland. The boy looked similar to Tyrell and the woman who was with the boy looked like his grandmother. The police later confirmed that the mother and boy were not them. On the 16th of September 2014, Strike Force Roseanne, Roseanne was established to investigate Tyrell's disappearance. It consists of 14 detectives and analysts working full time to solve the case. The team will also sift through hundreds of pieces of information pouring in from the public. The ramped up investigation comes after a personal plea from Tyrell's parents to members of state parliament, deputy premier and minister for justice at a private event in late 2015. The family spokesperson said that they just want to reinforce that police believe he could still be alive and they're just asking members of the public not to give up on him. The investigation is now the state's largest, involving dozens of analysts, investigators, and two strike forces, Rosen, run by the Homicide Squad, and Rosen 2, which provides assistance from the armed holdup, sex crimes, and fraud squads. On the 12th of September 2016, the second anniversary of Charles' disappearance, the NSW government governments announced a $1 million reward for information on his whereabouts. The police say that the reward will usually be paid out as conditional on the arrest and conviction of the offender, but the recovery of Tyrell had been added as a condition on his reward. It is the largest ever reward offered to find a missing person in NSW's history and doubled the amount of the state's previously highest standing reward of $500,000 attached to the 1999 case of murdered teenager Michelle Wright. The case has led to a record number of over 2,800 calls to NSW Crime Stoppers alone since Tyrell disappeared. The police have interviewed more than a, a thousand people in connection with the case. I am literally cursed or something. My phone's storage room was full and I had to delete lots of things. I hate it. I need a camera. I need money. <laughs> Let me continue. There have been 11,000 documents created by the police. The search has gone global as far as Europe and the US Crime Stoppers websites in up to 26 countries have been asked by the Australian Federal Police to post an appeal for information about the case. The police have identified 690 persons of interest to 
their inquiry and have called in other specialist squads within the state crime command to investigate many such persons as low priority targets so that the rest are being questioned by strike force Rosen. The Australia reported that it is possible detectives have already interviewed the person or persons involved. On the 12th of June 2018, police announced that they will undertake a large-scale forensic search in bushland around Kendall, which will last for three to four weeks and be run by search experts from the Public Order and Riot Squad. Tyrell was in foster care at the time of his disappearance, which prevented his biological parents from being named for legal reasons. The legal reasons bound by the legislation prevented them being identified publicly or holding any press conferences for the purpose of appealing publicly about their missing son. On the 24th of August 2017, the New South Wales Supreme Court of Appeal ruled that Tyrell's status as a foster child and the fact he disappeared while in state care with foster parents was one of legitimate public interest. His parents were previously allowed to speak during a 60 minutes interview on the condition that they did not show their faces. The father of murdered teenager Daniel Markholm had criticized the NSW government's refusal to allow Tyrell's parents to speak publicly about their son's disappearance as it was vital in helping to generate information that was then followed up by the police. They also feared the decision may have hindered the police investigation during the cru crucial weeks following Tyrell's disappearance. But the NSW government released a statement saying its key priority is to always act in the interests of the safety and well-being of children and not in any way to jeopardize ongoing police investigations. Just like Madeleine McCann. Despite various search efforts by the police and the forensic testing which failed to turn up any trace of Tyrell or clues about his disappearance, Police have yet to conclude what actually happened to him. Chief Inspector Gary Jubelin commented that the investigation into the disappearance of Tyrell remains a priority for the NSW police force and said that the investigators would treat the case as though he was alive until they had evidence proving otherwise. Yeah, I also want to believe he is alive. On the 20th of February 2016, a police spokesperson said that the ongoing investigation was one of the biggest investigations being run by homicide and that they have not given up hope of finding Tyrell alive. Now, let me say a few things. I literally have no idea about who kidnapped him. But I'm sure that someone did. Like, someone kidnapped him. I think we're all sure about it. But, like, it's been more than six years and we know nothing. Yes, we literally know nothing. Oh, this is so heartbreaking. We deserve to know what happened. And Tyrell deserves to have his own story. To tell and I just hope he is still alive and I hope that no one is hurting him someone knows what happened to him and I just hope that one day we will also know what happened now I will finish this video is really really bad oh god okay William Tyrell case remains open and William Tyrell remains missing after six years. Thank you for remembering this little boy with me and please if you liked the video give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. You have no idea how much it motivates me like you know I just want those likes and I just want to see your comments about the 
cases and you know but please don't give me thumbs down because like it really demotivates me is there a world like this i don't know well if you don't like my videos just don't watch them you don't have to watch my videos like uh i never give any video thumbs down because like why would i like if i don't like a video then i just don't watch it this is just this seems rude to me so i was about to say i'm talking too much but my phone <laughs> stopped recording for me mm. well okay so let me say my favorite line i created have a life full of stars till then <laughs>